Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at a U-Matic VCR. So, um, yes, this is something that I picked up. I just picked this up uh, from Facebook Marketplace for fifty dollars. Uh, this is a VO seventy six hundred U-Matic recorder. Um, I think it is from the late eighties, um, and it takes, of course, U-Matic cassettes. This is actually the cassette that actually came with the machine. And this one actually had a um, an issue with it, and I'm going to show you how I fix that issue because it's actually a very easy fix. Um, I was kind of uh, confused as to what the problem was, and then we'll actually look at this thing playing a tape and uh, show you all the features. Now this is not really a high end machine or a broadcast machine. It's not an SP machine. Um, it's just a standard low band machine. Um, it's you know, not even a BVU series, so it's not broadcast. It's more of an industrial machine, um, but it does play back pretty good. Um, I don't know the date code on it. Um, it it's, it's on the back, but um, I can't really show you the back right now. I'll show you it later, but I think this is from like the late 80s or maybe early 90s. I don't know. These were in production for a very long time, and uh, so I'll show you what the fault was. So um, I'll go ahead and... Um, Show you all the settings here. You see, we have our um, audio limiter. If I can just get this to work here. You have kind of audio monitoring functionality. You have audio level, um, audio monitor. Then you have your tracking control. Uh, you've got headphone output. You got two microphone inputs for channel one and channel two. Then you've got this input select. Either you can do it from the TV or the line input. Basically, there's a, there's a special there's a special connector in the back uh, that I'll, I'll show you later, but those are all the controls there. As you can see, we just have our basic, you know, um, eject, um, rewind, play, fast forward, pause, stop. And then you have your picture search buttons here, which is kind of like, you know, beta scan kind of, where you have a picture while you're in fast forward. Um, these work. And then of course you have your um, display here, and I will turn this on now. You can see it lights up here. Um, then there's this like programmed operation thing. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, then there's also a timer thing right here. But there's really not much to talk about on the um, on the front of it. It's a very basic machine. There's not that much stuff really. There's no uh, like jog wheel or, or anything like that. So it kind of it does leave some to be desired, something to be desired, but yeah, so now let's go into the problem with this machine and how I fixed it. Okay, so I've got the camera up a little bit, and now we're going to take a look at the, at the machine. I've got the top off of it, um, and basically there are these two things, these two plastic things that you just kind of um, untighten. You don't have to remove the screws. I actually removed the screws here. Um, I thought those had to come off, but they actually don't, and this before just... Uh, you know, does this, it just swings out like that and reveals the uh, tape mechanism. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Um, let's see. It's kind of hard to do this with a tripod on, but you can see there's a really big head drum here. Um, and I'll put it in a cassette tape for a moment and um, see what it does. So you put it in and the fault was you could put in the cassette and it would load. You can see it load here. Uh, if I hit, well, if I hit um, play, it will load. Yeah, you can see it load, and then it will engage. And then uh, there's a picture on the screen now. Um, but when you would hit a button like stop, or eject, or um, fast rewind, or fast forward, or anything like that, that would cause the tape to unload like this. like that. Um, basically, what would happen was when you would do something like that, the machine would get stuck. Obviously, it's not doing it now since I fixed it, but I'll show you what I did to fix it. So, if you don't notice here, if I just hit stop, it will unload. And it kind of gets into this, um, like, um, partially threaded position. Like, you can see right here, this is tape. And it's partially loaded. And um, the head drum is actually still set. Okay. 
not it was just it was just slowing down but you can see that it's partially loaded here and that's how it's supposed to be when you're in stop mode but what would happen was the machine would get stuck it would get stuck with the tape fully loaded and um, you know it would load up like this but it would basically get stuck in this loaded position um, and you know even powering off the machine didn't work you know power cycling it didn't work um, I couldn't figure out what was going on with it. Um, it just would not eject, and it would actually go into standby mode. If you look on the front, there's actually a standby indicator, and that indicator would actually be on all the time uh, when you tried to hit stop or eject, no matter what you did. So when I got this machine, the tape was basically stuck inside of it, and there was no way I could get it to play or do anything, because once you tried to make it eject or stop, it would just get stuck. So hopefully I've explained the problem. Now I'm going to show you what I did to fix it. So down here, if I can get a good view. Hold on, I'm just going to look at my uh, thing. It's going to be really hard to get a good view of this, so hold on. Okay, so this is the best view that you're going to get here. Um, so basically you can see this thing right here. And what this does is um, during... Um, Hold on. It's actually right here. See that? Um, during play, it's supposed to be in like this. And then when you hit the stop button or the eject button to make it unthread, it's supposed to do this. It's supposed to go that way. You know, come out like that. And what was happening was, this was being very slow. Like, when you would move it over here, it would... It would basically be very slowly and gummed up, this lever here. Um, so as you can see, if I put in the tape, the tape is going to work. I'm going to hit play on the tape. And you can see how that engages. And I'll, I'll show you what's on the tape in a moment. But you notice that it is in that position. And if I hit a uh, stop, you see how it comes out like that. What was happening was that it was stuck like this all the time because it wasn't, it was all gummed up. So that was causing the machine to basically go into standby mode. So what I did is that if you look right here, there is a shaft and I'm not sure if I can get a good view on it. Uh, let's see. hard to see it but if I get it to focus just right you can see that this is the uh, shaft for the thing and of course yeah this is kind of really hard to film with this uh, camera like this I'm using my professional Sony camera and it kind of sucks but what I did is I simply just applied some three-in-one uh, machine oil um, to it let me just zoom out. Obviously, I just got this on my fingers, so hopefully this doesn't get all over the camera because this bottle is kind of a... Uh... Hold on. Sorry for that slow zoom out, but this is what I used on the shaft. This 3-in-1 multi-purpose oil that I got from Walmart for like $4. Uh, basically, all I did was just put some on that shaft. Um, hold on. Yeah, this is kind of hard to do. It's hard to zoom in, but if I zoom back in, this is the shaft. And all I did, I just put a few drops on there, and then I just waited a few minutes. And uh, now the machine works. Uh, it does not go into standby mode anymore. It unthreads just fine. And it plays back just fine, so... Uh, yeah, so for $50, uh, I got a working, you know, pneumatic machine. And, of course, you know, um, this problem was kind of hard to find because I thought originally it might be idlers or belts. But it turns out that there's not a single belt in here or an idler or anything like that that is actually, like, worn out or anything. Um, it's just that... It's just that um, the it just needed some uh, lubrication. And I guess that's pretty common with these pneumatic machines. Um, 
so yeah, if I hit stop, you'll see it, uh, you'll see it eject. Actually, I want to hit play. You can see it load. It's very fun to watch it load. It's just so big. Just look at that go round and round and round. It's just so fun to just watch it thread. I wish I could watch it do that all day. I could watch it thread and non-thread all day. But yeah, that's basically how I fix this machine. Um, I'll link actually in the description to an iFixit guide that actually is how I figured out the cause of this problem because at first I thought it was like the idler or something. I, I even tried boiling the idler and that didn't even work. And I actually have a replacement idler on the way so I'm going to have to return that. Um, but I also realize that, you know, the belts on this machine are okay. I don't see anything wrong with the belts. They probably could use a change. There's a few belts, like a loading belt over here. And there are some, there's a belt on the bottom of the machine. And um, there might be, I think, I think there's only like three or four belts in this machine. Um, and of course the idler. So not, not that many belts. Um, but, but they're in pretty good condition. I mean, this machine is pretty much in good condition. Um... It would just needed that. So, yeah. So that's how I fixed it. And now we're actually going to take a look at the bottom of the, uh, I mean, the, the back of the unit. And then we'll show you uh, some uh, captures taken from this unit. Because uh, everybody wants to see how this is, how the quality of the U-Matic is. So hold on. I will show you the back of the machine in just a moment. So I'm going to quickly show you the ports on here. Um, on the left, we've got a TV port. This is a special 8-pin connector um, that allows you to actually connect this to uh, an old TV. Uh, there were a few old uh, TVs that like had a tuner built in that you could connect this to and record off the air using this, but this probably wasn't used that much. Uh, then you've got your video in, and you've got two video outputs, and you've got your audio monitor output. Uh, if we go down here, you can see that, you can see the, um, hold on, let me actually fix the, uh, there. I just changed it to uh, autofocus. Uh, but you can see right down there is the model number and the serial number and the uh, date code, which is 1988. So we know that this machine was made in the late 80s. You have RF output, so you can hook it up to a TV that doesn't have anything. And you've got this um, RX data remote, which I'm not entirely sure what that is about. Um, and then of course you have your audio input and output here. They're just standard RCA jacks. They're not XLR jacks like the BVU series was. The BVU series uh, used um, XLR jacks. So yeah, that's basically an overview of this machine. Not much to talk about. I just wanted to talk about the fix. So now we're actually going to see some footage from this, um, you know, from this, uh, uh, VCR. We're going to record some, uh, footage using the DSR PD-150. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's about it. Let's, uh, do that. All right, this is a test of the Sony VO7600U-Matic VCR. I am recording from my Sony DSR PD-150 using the composite output. And this should give you a general idea of what low band um, three quarter inch U-Matic looks like. As you can see, it's quite a lot better than VHS and beta because it runs at a higher tape speed. Uh, U-Matic runs at a tape speed of 3.5 inches per second, the same as a compact cassette. And, it, and while there's no um, like AFM sound like there is on um, beta hi-fi and VHS hi-fi, um, because the tape speed is the same as a cassette, you're pretty much getting stereo audio, which is basically the same quality as, you know, a cassette tape. So there really isn't any need for any AFM modulated sound like there is on VHS and Beta. Uh, it sounds pretty good. And um, as you can see, the video quality is, it's a, it's pretty decent. Um, you know, not as good as Umatic SP, but definitely is a noticeable difference, um, you know, between um, noticeable difference um, above beta and VHS, and you can kind of see why this format was used for kind of industrial purposes um, and stuff like that. And um, there is also some faults. There might be some ringing. Uh, that was kind of what something that Umatic had a problem with, ringing artifacts in the picture. Uh, but honestly, looking at my uh, PVM, it actually looks very good. 
um, very good quality picture. And of course, you know, this machine is a very basic machine, but it's very good for archiving. I mean, it's perfect for archiving. Um, SP tapes really, I guess, aren't that common. Uh, because by the time the SP tapes did come out, Betacam was already, um, you know, on the market and doing pretty well. And I do have a Betacam machine that I hope to show you in a future video. And I do have two portable U-Matics that I hope to show you in another video. Um, hopefully I can get to those pretty soon. But I thought I would do a video on this. And, you know, for 50 bucks, just having to lubricate that one shaft. And now it pretty much works as a working, you know, archive machine. It will be perfect for archiving low-band tapes. And, uh... Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe if you want to see more of it. Um, yeah, that kind of wraps up the video. I thought I'd, I'd just make a quick video about this kind of uh, good Facebook Marketplace score that I got. So, yeah, see you in the next one, and goodbye. The Orioles exploded last night. They battered the Tigers 11 to 4. Every Orioles starter got a hit. Mickey Tuttleton got his 20th homer of the year and reliever Mike Smith picked up his first major league victory. The Birds now go to Toronto for a series with the Blue Jays. Many of you are probably planning a traditional 4th of July, a parade then fireworks. If you haven't decided where to go yet, maybe this list can help. There's a Towson Independence Day parade at 10 this morning. Our own Vicki Cox is mistress of ceremonies. There will be celebrations at Towson State University all day. Celebrations starting at noon and fireworks at 9 tonight at Downs Memorial Park in Anne Arundel County. In Howard County, the fun starts at the Columbia Lakefront at noon, followed by fireworks at 9.30. There will be a 13-gun salute at 7.30 tonight at the Annapolis Harbor. At 8, the Naval Academy Band will play, followed by fireworks at 9. And at the Inner Harbor, an old-fashioned 4th of July beginning at noon with fireworks at 9.30. Well, that's all for us. Ron and Horace will be back today at noon. Then the entire morning team gets back together tomorrow at 6.30 for Channel 2 News Today. I'm Noreen Turin. Have a great 4th of July, everybody.